Shea. I'm a lecturer in computer science department in Cork Institute of Technology. Um, I guess I just want to provide a bit of context to our department. We are probably the largest computer science department in Ireland. We probably. Um, we have approximately 850 registered what we call whole time students. Um, and 650 of these are actually registered full time by day. And the rest are part time by night studying masters masters by research or PhD students. Um, we have a number of undergraduate, postgraduate and taught master's programs and we also have research and master's and, and PhD students. Um, two of our students um, in our undergraduate programs are actually presenting tonight from our BSc Honours in Software Development program. Um, we have gone through programmatic review this year so we have radically changed our programs to include I suppose from programming fundamental to microservices in our software development streams, from networking fundamentals to SDN in, in streams that contain networking. There is an information security tree stream going through some programs, and there's also a data science and analytics stream going through our software development degree. So we've really went out to industry, we would engage, engage with industry, and we've asked them what they want, and this is what they have told us they want to include it in our undergraduate degrees. Um, I'm not really here to talk about the undergraduate degrees per se tonight. What, I'm, what I want to do really is promote um, our, one of our new online master's programs, which is in the area of software architecture and design. And first of all, I just want to outline how we deliver online programs in CIT. Um, we have a unique model in delivery. Um, first of all, all lectures are delivered live online. Um, so you can be sitting at home and you can um, watch your lecture. The lectures are recorded and they can be played back on any device at any time. Um, we have a fully virtualized private cloud infrastructure as well and this is really important because we want to actually support our STEM students. The reality is um, this is an applied program and we have to provide a lab infrastructure to support the students that are studying online. And what this means is that every single student gets a virtual desktop but on top of that um, they also get a virtual lab infrastructure where they can spin up up to eight virtual machines and basically create a lab infrastructure and they can access this anytime, anywhere, um, and, and, and during the weekends, any, and, any, anytime. Okay, so um, we have students registered all over the world from East, West Coast America, Germany, um, Egypt, um, uh, England, and most of them still come from, 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 from Ireland. Um, we have a range of master's programs, which include um, the MSc in cloud computing, um, the MSc in information security, the MSc in software architecture and design, and MSc in information design and development. And all of these programs have been designed with industry. We have gone out to industry and we've asked them again, what do you want in, in terms of um, you know, promoting programs and trying to get um, staff retention and how to upskill existing staff. And, and a case study I'm providing here is our MSc in cloud computing. Um, in 2011, no one really knew what cloud computing was. And um, uh, e EMC came to us and they said, look, we have a skills gap here. We want to um, make sure our staff are ready for cloud computing. And we really didn't even know what that meant at the time. Um, but we worked with um, key industry partners, which included um, VMC, uh, EMC, VMware, IBM, and we created a unique program offering. And this program has been running for the past seven years. So the latest one that we have is the MSc in Software Architecture and Design. Um, this one is replacing an existing program in uh, software development. Um, it is a very focused program. It is targeted at software professionals working in industry with three to five years experience. Um, it's really focused on people who want to pursue a career in software development and want to progress to a software architect or to be a senior member of the software development team. Um, it includes modules on software architecture and design. So you look at software architecture and software design and you look at common patterns to apply to software and to create, um, I suppose, um, good software solutions. The role of the software architect is critically evaluated um, in this process. Um, and in addition, the role of the software architect is evaluated in, in the face of emerging technological trends and also um, agile development methodologies, where typically you know, the upfront design um, in applications and software um, is, 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 has been diminished. And the role of the architecture in this process is, is going to be looked at. We believe that um, 
if you are going to do a master's in software architecture and design, you have to include a module on microservices. So we look at how to break up a monolithic application into scalable microservices, put these into containers, and manage them in a distributed environment. We also have a data analytics stream um, going through our masters, includes a module on decision analytics and data analytics. We also have a security vulnerabilities module, how to um, make sure that your software isn't vulnerable for defects, um, and how to identify, detect, and resolve vulnerabilities as part of your software. Um, and there are other elective modules um, on programming language design and declarative and concurrent programming. So this program is going to be running in September and um, we are going to be accepting applications over the next um, few months. Um, I guess for those who are interested in, in it, um, maybe if, if James could forward on the slide deck afterwards, which includes my contact details, I'd be more than happy um, to talk to anybody about the program. Um, I guess this is one, I suppose, one final um, note is that um, what we're seeing in um, CIT, um, a lot of are, you know, people who have a degree or people who have a master's and they want to um, continue their education potentially to PhD level. And, but the problem is they want to be employed and get a full-time wage at the same time. So we have a number of um, PhD students now that we call work-based based, based PhDs. So the student would come up with an idea for a PhD that is aligned to the business objectives of the company and then they will be registered full-time as um, PhD students within the department and we have a number of PhD students registered in the department in this mode so again what I would say to you is that there are opportunities um, if you have an ex a master's and want to pursue um, your education to um, a level 10 which is a PhD award um, and I'm not going to go into both our, 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 our different groups, um, but finally I just want to maybe highlight if there are employers here um, that we, I suppose, engage with industry and um, industry engages with us back and, and they have recognised that, you know, they want to hire from these programmes and, and they offer um, student scholarships. Um, so Intel Security, they identify the best student at the end of first year and they provide a scholarship for the remaining duration of the programme. eCentire does the same. Um, and um, this is one way of, um, for industry to engage with us and I suppose promote their brand and promote their company and try and get graduates from our various programmes. Um, so that's really it. It was really just a very, I promised James it would be some, a short and sweet and um, I've lived up to my, to my promise. My um, email address is donoshea at cit.ie and um, I'll ask James to forward on the details of the presentation after this. Thank you very much. Yeah.